The first poem I'm going to read is dedicated to Alice Roth, my literature teacher in junior year in high school, where we read Shakespeare's Hamlet, Macbeth, Romeo, and Juliet. This is a poem to Matthew, a friend of ours in uh, Massapequa, the village of Math Massapequa on the South Shore, written in the style of Shakespeare. Matthew, wherefore art thou, fair Matthew? Hast thou been seen with the sinking sun over great South Bay? Or hast thine eyes merged with the starry night that all heaven weeps at thy brilliance? The solstice has passed and the equinox is nigh, but we have not witnessed thy shining presence on the avenues or paths of Massapequa, though we search fervently for clues of thy spectral advent. O oh, appear, phantom of the south shore, we await as steady as the magnet pointing north. Thank you. I want to dedicate to Mr. Chamis, our biology teacher in my junior year in high school, <laughs> who taught us biology that was as beautiful as poetry. This is called The Cicada. It's a, a tribute to Mary Oravon, a New York City poet who wrote a beautiful poem about the birthing of the cicada. The cicada, and I remember the iridescence in Gossamer's celery wing illuminating the twilight last spring. No, it was summer that I could see the birthing of the cicada through the eyes of Tagore, through the eyes of Mary, who saw what I had never seen or imagined. And now I hear their song on the grassland of the South Shore and in the marshes of the bay. Thank you. <laughs> the last poem is short poem. Uh, I dedicate to the, uh, the, the uh, orchestra leader, band leader in high school, who allowed me to play the clarinet, even though I wasn't as good as Mike DeBetta and Gerard Aranti, and even gave me a few private lessons. This is about Arnold Schoenberg and Ezra Pound. Schoenberg wrote in a 12-tone row in 1912. He composed Pier, Pierrot Lumiere, and then went on to write eight tonal music. And... Uh, Pound suggested this might have gone too far, far as free, land, free verse poetry did. Reflections on 12-tone row. Yes, Vincent, you could not tell from listening to 12-tone row the poem was 12 lines to match the 12 tones that Schoenberg experimented with on that frosty evening in 1912. And the word I was searching for was atonal, the template for much music that was to follow. Perhaps music went too far, veered away from dance, as Ezra Pound reminded us. Poetry should not veer too far from song, so poetry and music can move us once more. Thank you.